Welcome to the LA Story Podcast with Stevie Wilson. Hey people, this is Stevie for the LA Story and we're here with Celia Ward-Wallace and that name may not quite be familiar to you yet, but wait till we get done with this. Where we are is you're getting to see the skyline of Long Beach and the Women's Conference here in Southern California. That's in Long Beach. So Celia so happens to be here and we know each other through a networking group called First Tuesday and that's based out of West Los Angeles and also in South Bay. And if you are in Southern California and are interested in getting to know a pretty groovy bunch of people, then you need to come talk to me and then I'll point you in the right direction. Anyways, that's how I met Soya. Soya has the most interesting book, but the whole point of her book is how she got to it. It's not quite the end point, but there, there's a, it's a landmark. So Soya has a really interesting story about how she got to the point of writing this book, which is how to have it all. What is the title? It's called A Woman's Guide to Having It All, Life Lessons to Live By, and it has 30 specific life lessons, really for all people, but in particular for women, about just how to approach life and get through the ups and downs and the challenges and our neuroses and all of the stuff that we all have to juggle. A little guidebook that helped me when I was going through some really hard times and still helps me now when things have gotten a little bit better. Right, and you got to this book, writing this book, through a very circuitous, interesting, but not uncommon route. Absolutely. Well, we, we've all heard about the economy and the downfall of the economy, and I'll get to how that played into it, but I can tell you I came out of a great household, full of love, great parents who were civil rights activists, and what I should have figured out that they shared with me uh, was that you know all of us have passions and gifts and joys in life and that we should probably go into doing work in those fields and that we will all end up a little bit happier in life. But what most of us do is, especially people like me who grew up maybe a little on the lower income side, is we have a void inside of ourselves that we're trying to fill about money and accumulation of things and security and wealth. And so I very quickly got a great city job with all the pension benefits, all that stuff. But it wasn't really my thing and it wasn't something that I was passionate about and it wasn't something I was committed to. And instead of figuring that out very early on and just transitioning to really what I should have done in life, instead I sat there for 10 years and coasted and collected the paycheck and like a lot of people do. And, but really inside I was sort of dying. And simultaneously, my husband, who's a, a risk taker and an entrepreneur, he said, you know, we have to jump on this real estate boom. And so just like a lot of people, we started with one property and we got another and we got another. And before we knew it, we had a ton of properties and we were doing great and we had a lot of money in the bank and we were doing all these amazing things in life. But that came with the price, you know, it came with the stress, it came with the conflict, it came with the anxiety of what's going to happen if I lose all of this or what's going to happen if I mismanage it or um, you know really ultimately when you grow up without money you're always worried about losing money and, and becoming a bag lady when you're old and gray so in some ways a self-fulfilling prophecy but also the intervention of you know the crash of the economy is we got really wiped out like a lot of people did and you know at least 90 percent of the properties we had and, and assets we had were gone overnight and so, uh, although it was a very hard time, a challenging time, and certainly months, even a year or so of being depressed and sort of feeling hopeless and helpless and what's next, um, it was what I know now, you know, to be those moments that we all sometimes have to have in life in order to transition to the next thing. So for me, I had to get hit over the head for me to get the message in life that it wasn't about uh, having all of these things and that having it all, which is ultimately what I named the book, is a woman's guide to having it all, um, is not about the car and the house and the 14 properties and being able to travel all over the world. Having it all is really ultimately getting back to who are we inside, loving ourselves, being whole with whoever we are, accepting ourselves, forgiving ourselves, and really starting to like and love ourselves, and that that is about having it all, and then everything else starts to come together. And so for me, I made a shift in my life, I, I left the day job, I realized I had all of these great gifts of helping people, coaching people, making plans, having vision, having creativity, as well as 
speaking and using my voice and empowering and motivating people with my story. And ultimately, I realized that I needed to create a book. I wanted to create a manual that women, and, and ultimately now it's been men, love the book as well. So any men out there that are thinking of getting it, I think you'll get a lot out of it. But writing a love letter to women all around the world globally of how can we get through the day? How can we become a better version of ourselves? How can we see beauty all around ourselves? How can we, uh, like you and I have, you know, find common ground and support each other's work right. instead of, uh, you know, breaking each other down or being jealous or envious of each other? And so there's 30 different life lessons that when I was going through my challenges really helped me get through it. And now that I'm in a better place and doing work that I love and really know ultimately I'm where I'm supposed to be, I still come back to it because I'm like everybody else. I'm a lifelong learner and I, you know, you have to keep working at it every single day. Well, that's just it. What women have to realize is that it's not about the competition with the person next door or about not having the things. It's about what we can each give back to each other to be supportive and helpful and not think or feel that we're alone. Absolutely. And that there's nobody there for us who would listen to us or help us. And in fact, I was telling somebody that today. I said, you may think that all the things that you're going through, nobody wants to hear or yeah. they're going to let you down. I said, but I've been there. Yes. And I'm there and I will listen to you. And we all have a story to share. Exactly. We all have a unique story, but there's something in the story that we all have common ground with. Exactly. And that we can all relate to. And as women in particular, you know, we have a facade where on the outside we want to look like we have it all going on. You know, we want to look great. We want to be the best friend. We want to have a great partner in life. We want to have a great job. We want to be the best mom in the world. And everything needs to be knocking it out of the park at the 100% level. And although that's great, it's not really realistic. And inside, we sort of feel lonely and alone. Like, we don't want anybody to see that we're stressed out or that we're resentful or that we don't have it all. And so that's why my work has been really about, let's put it all out on the table, you know? What you see is, is a beautiful woman, but that doesn't mean that I have everything perfect together in my life and that I don't have depressed days or that I don't have anxieties or that I don't beat myself up and ha have, you know, hateful moments of myself or blame myself for things. Or, or when you, you know, run out of gas or have a flat tire or something goes wrong and you missed an appointment because of that and something yeah. else happens and you're sitting there going... What is, where's my life going? Absolutely. And so for me, the, the book and, and my work now, you know, one of the facets of what I do is, is creating a community. You know, it's great that I'm doing this work for myself, but it wouldn't be anything if it wasn't about really touching the lives of other people, which is the heritage and tradition I come out of about right. the civil rights background. And so, you know, I thought, you know, it's great that I'm getting the notoriety and the book is getting well received, but ultimately I want to be able to touch people's lives and build a community. And so we created the Empowering Women everyday community and tonight we have over 30 women here at the California Women's Conference and basically every month we have a women's night out workshop which is this event that I created because it was what I wanted which was you know for you you know the same thing is dynamic women we want to network we want to socialize we want to have a drink we want to do personal and professional development and there's no way that we have a night every single, you know, in our month for five, four different things. Right. And so I said, let me put that all into one night, have women come for three or four hours, do a workshop. We're working on one particular thing. They're also meeting like-minded women who are supportive, non-competitive, who want to make a difference in the world and use their gifts to reach other people. And then afterwards, we go out for drinks and dancing. And we just had one on Friday night, and we went out, you know, in L.A. and had a blast. And now half of those women are here tonight, you know. Excellent. And so, yeah, and so it's about building this community. Because me personally, I like to think big. And my mission is to empower over one million women globally, you know, globally, across all of the, the lines, all across the world, okay, so. uh, to go forward in, in loving themselves, loving others, being of contribution, building community, and really using their gifts to change the world. Okay, so you must have a website for this. Absolutely. Well, my website is my name, CeliaWardWallace.com, which is C-E-L-I-A-W-A-R-D-W-A-L-L-A-C-E.com. 
where they can find out about everything I do, all of the events, join the community. But also the book, A Woman's Guide to Having It All, is obviously on Amazon and they can find it there. And the ebook is only $1.99. So if you just want to test it out, you don't need the physical copy, but you just want to put it on your reader, you can do that too. Um, and men out there who are interested, my husband wants me to re-release it with another edition just for men, but, I, but you can go ahead and buy it too as well. Okay, people, we'll be back with another version of this. This it will be an audio. Okay, so while you're watching this now as a video, we will have an audio um, podcast. And this will also be available, uh, downloadable on iTunes as an MP3 as well. So this is Stevie for The LA Story. We want to thank Celia Ward-Wallace for her time right now on video. We're going to come back with an audio. So see you soon, people. Bye. Thanks for joining Stevie Wilson on LA Story. Feel free to check out other podcasts and videos. Bookmark it now. www.la-story.com.